Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Flagstaff Microlite 25 FKS travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. Your campsite, your awning, with plenty of room for that to come out. And of course on your off campsite, your deep slide here. you have plenty of room for that to come in and out and leave yourself a nice walking path. Because what else I want you to think about is where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is all the way at the rear on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Your water is on the end of the unit over on your campsite. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, first thing you're going to do after unhooking our hitch is level your unit. I do recommend getting the stick on level, putting it on your unit. Have someone watch that while you lower or raise with your power tongue jack that comes with a night docking light. You also have a manual override. If you lose power, there's a hand crank right there to bring this up or down. Speaking of power, check your batteries when you arrive. Make sure your battery posts haven't wiggled loose. Once we've got our unit level, we're going to stabilize it. In all four corners of the unit, you have stabilizing jacks three quarter inch hand crank simply crank these down as I do so I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop in the summer keep them from sinking into the ground good investment use your 10% off coupon get a four pack put it put them down run these down just until they're taunt remember they're stabilizing jacks not leveling jacks once you start to get any type of resistance from your hand crank go ahead and stop now you can run these down with a impact driver or a drill gun but again when you get to the bottom slow down because you don't want to change the levelness of your unit for the back set that one's down if you got your unit level and stable we can go ahead and hook up our power and water on the back of your unit 30 amp cord nice long cord there at the end of that cord should you need to plug in at home and your convenience pack is a 30 to 110 adapter Got our power hooked up, let's hook our water up. Come around the corner, on the back of the unit, here's your city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your units. Hook this up to your city water connection. Hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Come around the corner here to your hot water heater. Open this up and make sure your drain plugs back in. Uh, you may have left it out the last time you were camping. Put that back in there nice and snug. Once it's in there, you can go ahead and turn on your hose. After your hose has been out for a little while, go ahead inside and open up your uh, water valves. Once water is coming out of your uh, sinks, go ahead and close those. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hot water heater from indoors. You do have an on off electric element down underneath here. The only time you ever want to turn this on is when you're hooked up to 110. Otherwise, uh, turn it on indoors. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Look here to see if these are bubbled up. If they are, it's a reset button. And then your pressure release valve. Let's say you're gonna go camping and you're not gonna use city water. You're gonna go dry docking. Well, in that case, we're gonna come right next to your city water to your potable water tank. Simply fill this up with a hose 
No need for a water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when it's full. One is an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your tanks, your battery, etc. Press your fresh water button, that'll tell you when this is full. Just remember, when using potable water is when you're going to want to turn on your water pump. Don't use your water pump when hooked up to city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp. Power and water, let me go ahead and walk you around the unit to show you a few other things. I'll start here in the back at this docking station. Again, city water connection, cable and satellite. This is where you put your antifreeze in, your potable water. Inside there's a slide out drawer storage. Here's a ladder, utilize it, go up there and check the seams of your roof a couple times a year. Unit's also uh, prepped for a Furion backup camera. If you decide to purchase one from our store, it sits on the dash of your tow vehicle, giving the unit a backup camera. You have a black tank flush. We'll talk about that when dumping your tanks. Your power here. Your fresh water drain if you're using potable water. You drain that right there. We'll dump our tanks there. Easier access when your slide's closed. You have an outdoor shower. Another docking light. Again, your batteries. Your propane has a cover and is on a regulator. If you point this toward the tank you wish to be using, Lefty Lucy to open. Again, your power tongue jack. Pre-wired for solar, you can plug in a solar panel here and it'll trickle charge your batteries. All your hitch work in your storage here. This is access to the back of your fridge. Prepped for a TV. TV can snap on here. Um, cable and one cable and 110 out here. Indoors is a table and a griddle that was set up out here. Your quick connect LP is right there. Your main low point drain when leaving the campsite. You can get to it here. There they are actually up underneath the tire there. This is a flue for your furnace. If you run your furnace, steer clear of that. It will get rather warm. Another griddle out here. Pull this out. Pull your quick connect LP out. Snap that right in there. For another grill. You have another spray port here. And your hot water heater. That about covers everything on the outside. Close the grill back in. Let's go ahead and take a look inside your unit. Before I do, I'll talk about your awning. You do have a pitch adjust. Pick your cables at that end, starts raining. Pull that down there, that will tilt your awning. Do the same on the other end, which is more than likely, you probably have your pick your cable here. The outdoor speakers, awning light and porch light. This is a vent for your microwave. Coming up in your unit, first thing I'd like to point out is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camped with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. Just above that, to the left, 110 with GFCI reset, a Wi-Fi Ranger. This will allow you to be in the back of the camp, turn that on, and just like you're hooked up right to their Wi-Fi next door. The app, download the app. Uh, you can. Control your awning slide outs and your lights from your phone. You can stand outside with your phone and open up your slides and watch them come out. Really cool app. Your control panel. Here's where you check your brand new battery. Your flesh, brack, and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump. If you're using potable water, your water heater hooked up to gas. Your water heater hooked up to electric. Here's a tank heater if you're in inclement weather. You want to keep your tanks warm. Interior lights, porch, awning and step lights, your slide control, and your awning control. We'll take and run that awning back in. Like I said, you only want to run that awning out until you can see that, that bar. And your flap is down to 90 degrees. As you see, it will extend past that. So just watch it as you're bringing that in and out. We'll run that back in here for you. Oh, 
Got it on him back in, we will continue to your unit. Self-expansory microwave. You do have a light and a fan above your stove top here. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn this to high, hit your spark and there's your flame. Same thing on your oven. Down here, hit it, put it to light, hit your spark down here. No need for a pilot light anymore, and then just set it at the desired temperature. Pan light down is an oven light. 110 there. Your smoke alarm. Down below that on the floor here is your 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. Reason I mention it's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, if you're boondocking, nothing plugged in charging your battery, disconnect one of your battery posts to keep this from running your battery down. Your AC up here, we'll go back to your thermostat here in a minute. Turn your television on. While that's turning on, I will talk about your access panel to your breakers and fuse box. There's your TV. Up above that, your IRV technology sound system. We'll get all Bluetooth on the radio. So three zones. Indoors, the bedroom, and outdoors, or all three. Uh, AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, CD player. Touch it once for mute, hold it in, shut it off. Fireplace, remote for that as well. Go ahead and utilize it. So the fireplace, not just for looks anymore. I can make that brighter or dimmer, but the biggest thing is the heat. Turn the heat on this thing, it's chilly in the morning or evening instead of using up your gas go ahead and crank that up i'm going to set your remotes in here with your paperwork manuals uh that'll get it toasty in here in no time save your gas and use their electricity to warm it up in the hallway this is where you're wired for solar uh leave that template on there in case you ever do decide to wire the whole unit up here to right of your tv Here's your thermostat. Turn your AC on, so it turns on rather quickly. Shut that off. Turn your heat on. That came on. Now you notice when you shut your heat off, you'll hear the fan running a little bit longer. One last thing on your TV, where your cable goes in here, there's a little button to push to make that green light come on. That is a digital channel enhancer. Before you run your digital channel scan at your local park, uh, for local channels, go ahead and push that button in, make sure that's green. That'll allow you to pick up more channels. Coming into the bathroom. In the ceiling is a hand crank open exhaust vent with four different speeds. 110 under the sink. Make sure that this is snapped here for travel. Here's your bedroom or your hallway lighting. There's a table to set up in the living room. You have a hand crank open vent in here. 110 next to the beds. All prepped for a TV with the back through here, cable, and 110. That about covers everything on the inside. Here's your lighting for the bedroom. Travel again. Make sure this is snapped in. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. And close everything up. What I like to do is come over and shut off my interior lights from the switch. Then I can walk around and see all the individual lighting that I've left on. Bathroom's done. Close your bathroom door. So our lightings are off, come back over, turn your interior lighting on, and we're gonna hit slide in. Doors and drawers. Make sure that all doors and drawers are closed, especially all your kitchen ones over here. 
You don't need to rip those doors off because they've left, been left open a little bit and you're bringing your slide in. There is a grill and grill I was telling you about. I see I forgot to talk about your sofa. This does have heat massage as well as parachute pull reclining. And here's your, your heat and massage. So for interior lighting and exit the unit. Now I see we have left out a lot of exterior lighting. Shut up the porch, awning, and step light. As you come out of the unit, make sure that this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it. This kind of floats up on its own. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift to turn this handle. Unhook your cable, water, and power and bring up all of your stabilizing jacks. Okay, if we're hooked up at campsite, we're going between these tires on the campsite and dump our low point drain. Up here, we're gonna pull on this pressure release valve, let all the hot water out of there, and then we can go ahead and pull our drain down there. If you are dry docking, come over to your off camp side, open up that drain, hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. Now park your coordinate at the dump station, you got two dumps here, just ahead of your tires on your uh, driver's side of your tow vehicle. Once you get there, the first one you're going to want to dump is this black back one here, sewer outlet. So start here, hook up your hose. And the first one you can pull is that black handle. Now after you pull that black handle, it sounds like it's no longer draining. Come around to the back of the unit here. See your black tank flush. Actually, it's over here, behind your steps. Hook up the hose at the dump station, leave that black handle open, and let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Now you can unhook that hose, close it up, and pull your dray handle. Now your dray handle is going to be cleaner water as your sinks and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out a little bit for you. Then bring that up here and hook up to gray tank number two. Pull that handle again, cleaner waters. It's going to clean that sewage hose out for you. Get done there. Take that sewage hose and store it in a nice sanitary convenient place and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this microlight for many years to come. Happy camping.